What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today I've got a sort of opinion piece about sharks and people's inherent fear of them. As a shark scientist, I'm not afraid of sharks, but I can appreciate that a lot of people still are. I know for a fact there are several of you in the comments that have posted before that you are deathly afraid of sharks, but still enjoy learning about them. So today I wanted to dive into the psychology behind it all and the reasons that we might be afraid of sharks, including the media that we watch and read about them. We'll also have a look at some things that you can do to help yourself be less afraid of sharks and why sharks being scary might actually be a good thing. I know that one's going to be a little bit of a controversial one so stick around and just hear me out. A fear of sharks otherwise known as galeophobia isn't an irrational fear. I know sometimes people might have told you that your fear of these animals is irrational but it's not really because to put it simply these predatory animals are scary. Well, at least some of them are. If we use the classic example of a great white shark, this is a big fish, much bigger than us humans. It's got a mouth full of razor sharp teeth that are known for sawing flesh off the bone. And they're capable of using a bunch of different senses to locate their prey, some of which us humans don't even have. And they have on occasion been known to hurt or kill people. That on the face of it is a scary animal. It's not a monster, but it is scary. And when you flip it over to the human perspective, people are often terrified of being bitten or killed by a shark. Without doubt, it would be a pretty grim way to die and the human brain recognizes that and produces a fear response. That fear that we have though doesn't actually correspond to the facts around shark attacks. You're more likely to be killed by a whole bunch of different stupid things than a shark. Vending machines, cows and cars are three things that are considerably more likely to kill you than a shark. But you don't walk past a vending machine or a car and just suddenly lose your shit, do you? You just carry on with your day. I did admit cows there because I do know there are some people out there that are deathly afraid of cows for some reason or another. But all those three things are way more likely to unalive you than a shark is, statistically speaking anyway. And we don't fear those things because they don't really cause an emotional response in our brains. Sharks, however, definitely cause an emotional response in our brain. Alongside this emotional response, we also have that fear of losing control. For some of us, when we're out in the ocean or in any body of water, we have that dreaded feeling of losing Losing control. We can't see what's underneath us and the water might be a little bit murky and we don't have control of what's going on in our surroundings. How many of you out there watching this video have been out in a body of water where you can't touch the bottom and then when that happens the thought just pops into your head or oh, I don't really know what's underneath me, could there be a shark? I bet it's happened to so many of you out there. It used to happen to me when I was a kid. I remember thinking it back when I was a kid when I was in a swimming pool, for God's sake. So I bet there's loads of you out there that have had that same thought pop into your head. And what that is, is a fear of losing control and a fear of the unknown. We're in this environment that we're not evolved to be in and we don't know what's in there with us. That fear we have is a completely rational fear and it's been hardwired into human brains for thousands and thousands of years. Fear isn't something that we're born with. You only have to look at babies and toddlers to see proof of this. For example, if you've ever been skiing, the amount of young kids you see absolutely flying down the slope, snow plowing all the way down as fast as they can because they're just not afraid of falling and hurting themselves. By the same token, infants aren't afraid of things like heights or a snake because their brains haven't been exposed to those fearful things. But as we get older, we're exposed to more and more fearful stimuli and it sets up avoidance behaviors for these things throughout our adult lives. We also get fear from our early ancestors who were out there trying to survive in the primordial world. Early humans had a lot of shit to be afraid of, especially wild animals because they knew threats like that could kill them. The fear that they had was an adaptation that protected them from dangerous things and it allowed them to survive and pass their genes on to the next generation. So next time you cack your pants because someone jumps out on you, just blame your caveman ancestors. But this hardwired fear that we have from our ancestors doesn't fully explain why we're frightened of sharks specifically. We're also frightened of sharks because of things that we've seen about them, whether that be written media or visual media or stories that we've heard told by word of mouth. All of these forms of media create a mental image in our heads of what sharks are and what they do. Of course, I'll point to Steven Spielberg's Jaws as one of the most obvious examples of a form of media that vilified sharks because people at the time just weren't able to separate the fact from
from the fiction when they watched that film. And it wasn't really their fault. It was just that the knowledge wasn't there. When I first watched Jaws as a kid, it was a pretty scary film. But as I got older and I learned a little bit more about sharks, the film got significantly less scary. And that's because I was later able to separate the fact from the fiction about sharks and could just appreciate the movie for what it is a good scary story. But Peter Benchley and Steven Spielberg aren't the ones we need to hunt down with pitchforks. The modern media is a far worse villain in this story. Sharks are a frequent subject of popular press coverage and are rarely featured in a positive light. And there's even been scientific research papers that have been written about it. One particular research paper trawled through hundreds and hundreds of examples of sharks being written about in major US and Australian newspapers. And they found the most common topic by far were sharks biting humans. More than half of all the articles written across a 10 year period were about shark attacks and only 11% of them mentioned anything about shark conservation. The grim reality of journalism means that shock and fear sells. And that means that whenever any shark bites any person anywhere in the world, it's major headline news everywhere. But as a result of this, it gives the false impression that shark attacks are happening everywhere all the time, when in reality, they're just not. The crazy thing here is that in that research paper that I just mentioned to you about, they performed a content analysis on how the shark attacks were presented. And for Australian newspapers, in 38% of the articles written about shark attacks, the shark didn't even touch the human. The shark literally just swam near them, but the newspaper still referred to it as a shark attack. 38%, that's over a third of the articles, mentioning shark attacks somewhere in the headline where the shark literally did nothing but swim past a human. And the problem with this is that it just completely misrepresents the animal on a global stage. You as an everyday person are bombarded by this media, so much so that eventually it just settles in your brain. You hear the word shark and your brain immediately follows that with the word attack. It's subconsciously imprinted there in your brain through no fault of your own. A lot of the media outlets that produce this type of content as well also make the grave error of never interviewing the specialists. You know, the people who have dedicated their their entire professional lives to understanding these animals and their behavior. You'll rarely see shark specialists being interviewed or questioned in these knee-jerk shark attack news stories. But weirdly, you will find quotes from non-shark specialists or shark aficionados or people who were just there at the time giving their opinion. It's a really strange thing to do and a good friend of mine, David Schiffman, put it quite nicely by saying, can you imagine journalists doing this for other news stories? Markets cheered the move towards lower interest rates but finance aficionado Bob from Ohio said we should just buy gold and bury it in our gardens. It just wouldn't happen, would it? Because it's just ridiculous. <laughs> The lack of media consultation from people who actually know what they're talking about can really damage the perception of sharks. And it could just create a cycle of misinformation that's really, really difficult to break out of. So how do we break out of that cycle? How can we alleviate our fear? Well, there are a few different things that you can do. And one of those comes back to that fear of losing control. And what you can do is actually give yourself the illusion of control. Say you were wanting to go swimming in the ocean, you could perhaps read up about the different shark species that you might get in the water where you're going to go swimming. For example, someone who is deathly afraid of sharks here in the UK might balk when I say to them, yeah, we get sharks in the UK. But if they were to read up and learn about those shark species, then they'd realize that the vast majority of them are less than three feet long and eat nothing but small fish and crabs, and that the others are almost exclusively found several miles offshore and tend to stay there. Or that the massive shark we get here in the UK with the huge mouth and giant dorsal fin is completely harmless to humans and only eats plankton. Learning about these animals is a surefire way to help alleviate your fear of them. You can also learn about how to be shark safe and the things that you should or shouldn't do when you decide to go swimming. We've spoken about them lots before here on the channel, but it's things like not swimming at dawn and dusk, not swimming near seal colonies, not wearing jewelry when you go swimming, all those different things. So doing all these things can give you that sense of control and that will make you feel like you're in less danger. Now, right back at the start of this video, I mentioned to you about how sharks being scary might actually be a good thing. I know there's probably lots of shark activists out there who wanna cuss me out for saying that, but I do actually believe it. Some of these people would probably try and have you believe that sharks are these completely harmless animals that never eat humans, blah, 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 which in truth is a load of rubbish. There are shark species out there that can be dangerous. The vast majority of them though, probably 97% I'd say, 
aren't dangerous. But there is that 3% that can be dangerous. There's also a few examples that we have now of sharks biting and consuming people. We've got video footage of it. It does happen. It's rare, but it does happen. Anyone who tries to tell you otherwise is not being upfront and honest with you about this species. Now, because there are these potentially dangerous shark species out there, that might mean people are scared of them, but they might like them because they're scary. A predatory shark with its crazy teeth, insane speed and powerful body is an absolute machine capable of causing serious damage to its prey. And for a lot of people, that's scary, but it's also pretty cool. They might like the fact that this is a scary animal and if they like it because it's scary, that's a good thing. Some people seem to have given off the impression that we can't save and conserve animals that people think are scary. And we can only save animals if the public think they're cute and cuddly. It's just nonsense. We absolutely can save animals that people think are scary as long as people recognize and respect them for what they are perfectly evolved predators. Let's take the example of the giant panda, right? The poster boy for the WWF. For years, we've seen images and videos of these animals rolling around on the floor, being silly, cute, and cuddly playthings. Slight side note, wild giant pandas are definitely not cute and cuddly playthings, by the way, guys. They can rip your face off if they want to. But that's what they've been presented as to us, these cute and cuddly playthings that we need to save from extinction. And has it actually helped? Not really. There's still only 1,800 giant pandas left out there in the wild. It's entirely likely that giant pandas will eventually become extinct in the wild. So the whole idea of presenting them as this cute, nice animal didn't really work. Why would we expect a different result for sharks? The point I'm trying to make here is that sharks being scary or frightening is actually pretty irrelevant to their conservation. It just doesn't make sense to me. But if we can get people to respect these animals for what they are, which is amazingly adapted and occasionally dangerous predators, that's when we'll have won the battle that's when we'll be able to save them. It's about playing that careful mid-ground with them that I've spoken to you guys about before, where they're not these cute and cuddly playthings, but they're not mindless serial killers either. I don't know, those are just my thoughts. What do you guys think about it? Are you deathly afraid of sharks? Do you think sharks being scary is a good thing? Do you like sharks because they're scary? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. But before you head off, if you like scary sharks, then you're definitely gonna wanna click on this video right here. In it, we have a look at Deep Blue, probably one of the most famous great white sharks sharks in the world. She's been reported to be one of the biggest great white sharks ever, but in this video, you'll find out just how big she actually is. So give it a watch here.